Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, medicines and uh, medicines for milk. And uh, we're going to talk about proteins, and um, some of these proteins are used for uh, replacement that people use, and some of them have been modified to the biotech industry. And these are uh, you actually used, and some of us are going to be using them for anti-cancer and for treating uh, inflammatory diseases uh, like uh, arthritis. And these drugs are expensive and difficult to make. And uh, I'm going to show you, and they're usually made in these stainless steel tanks, and I'm going to show you how we can make them in milk. So first we have to talk about proteins. So proteins are the components of our body and they have many functions and you really don't think about them much unless you need one of them. So for example, insulin. People who are deficient in insulin, you have to have a purified protein for that injection. And the good news about this is that we can make these proteins because all of that information to make these protein is in our DNA. It's in our genes. It's coded. So uh, there's two different parts of this. There's the coding sequence, and that's the part that the cell uses to make the actual protein. And the other part is the promoter region, and that tells the cell when to make the protein. So if we want to make this outside of the body, we can take the coding sequence and link that to a bacterial promoter. Bacteria are easy to grow. You grow them, and they make insulin. And that's how insulin's made today. But some of the proteins that we want to make are very complex. Now, this is factor seven, and we all have that in our body. But sometimes this is used to treat people who have clotting disorders. Now, if you want to make this protein, you need a mammalian cell. So you can get mammalian cells from animal tissues, and one that's used often is actually Chinese hamster ovary cells. They grow very well in cell culture. So if you take the coding sequence and you link that to a promoter that works in these cells, you grow the cells, they'll secrete this out into the media, and you can then purify that and use that as a drug. And this is the way most of the biotech drugs are made today. And they're made in these very large stainless steel tanks that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So the good news is you can make them. The bad news is these drugs are very expensive. The tanks are expensive, the media is expensive, and the yield is not great. So that's why many of these drugs cost thousands of dollars a gram, $50,000 to $100,000 per treatment. And there's other, actually some other drugs. And for an example, this is human antithrombin, and this is what we work on. Now, this you can't even make in cell culture. So you're forced to actually purify this from blood. But, and we'd like to get away from doing that because of all the inherent risk. So um, we all have antithrombin in our blood, and that keeps our blood from clotting at the wrong time. But there are some people who are deficient in antithrombin, and they have a high incidence of blood clots, particularly if they're going through surgery or childbirth. So the goal here is to make a recombinant form of antithrombin. And this, these are our bioreactors, <laughs> all right? Looks like a goat, walks like a goat, smells like a goat. <laughs> Now, what's unique about these animals is they have a little bit of DNA stably integrated in their genome that allows them to make a new product in their milk, human antithrombin. So we milk these animals and purify this drug out and use this, uh, purify the, uh, the protein out and use this as a drug. Now, the interesting thing is that these animals produce three grams per liter, which is much more than you could ever get in cell culture. 600 liters in a year, two kilograms per goat per year. 500 of these animals is enough antithrombin for the whole world. Okay, so now we look, these animals are housed not far from here. And this is a, looks like a dairy farm, smells like, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's a state-of-the-art facility, double fenced, and the blue area is where the goats can come out and exercise, so it's the goat playground. Um, so they're very well taken care of. And this uh, facility is ALAC accredited, uh, inspected by the USDA, uh, the EMA and the, uh, and the FDA. It's the first farm to reach this level of uh, um, certification uh, to produce a drug. And we have the capacity here with 2,000 goats to produce actually metric tons of these proteins. So you would say, well, why would you do this in milk? So I, having grown up in a dairy farm, I would say that if you wanted to make a lot of inexpensive protein, make it in milk. 
because the mammary gland is designed to secrete proteins. It's a natural bioreactor. You leave the cells where they belong in an organ that's designed just to do this, and yet all those cells get an optimal delivery of oxygen and nutrients. Then that's why we can get such high concentrations of these proteins. Not only that, you can actually harvest the protein without harming the animal. You milk it twice a day, and people have been doing this for centuries. So we do this by making transgenic animals. Now, a transgenic animal is an animal that has new DNA stably integrated in its genome. Now, it's important that it's stably integrated because we're going to use subsequent generations of these animals as our bioreactors. So we and we use we get the protein into the milk because we use the promoter that's milk specific. It's only turned on in the mammary gland, and we link to that the coding sequence. In this case, of antithrombin, we microinject this into a single cell embryo, and the DNA integrates into the animal's genome. And then, as that embryo develops, the animal will have that new DNA in all of its cells. And then when the animal grows up, and you breed it, goes through gestation and parturition, and starts lactating, this promoter turns on and produces this new protein in the milk. So of course, beginner's luck. The first animal we got was a male, <laughs> so we had to wait a generation. But his daughters carried the trans gene, and then actually we've gone out now six generations of these animals. So we have a herd of these animals. The, the DNA is stable, and if you get the, they get the DNA, they produce the new protein in their milk. So we harvest this product by standard dairy procedures. You milk the animal. This is a milking parlor. The animal puts some feed in there. The animal walks in, and you milk the animal. Of course, now it takes two people to milk a goat. One person to milk the goat and one person to fill out the paperwork. <laughs> so, because we're we're collecting now a drug, and this milk is then taken and put over a standard purification process that's used in the industry. And in the end, we get a pure drug that's put through clinical trials and was approved. And actually, this was the first drug approved using this technology, and both in Europe and in the U.S. But more importantly, it Allowed us to make a recombinant form of antithrombin, so you didn't have to depend on purifying it from blood. So now that we've established this, we have the we can go from the DNA to the goat to the milk to the protein to purification and commercialization. We're doing that with, now with a number of different proteins,、uh, some of them、uh, plasma proteins. But what I want to do is shift to the follow-on biologics. Now these are the Generic forms of the billion-dollar biotech blockbusters. The, the markets are billions of dollars. These are now coming off of patent. So that means that we can take the same coding sequence for these products, put them on our promoter, put them in the animal, do the milk, collect it, purify the protein, and go through clinical trials. So we think that、uh, there, we have a couple advantages. And the, and what the goal is to make a less expensive product, and we have a couple advantages here. One is that we have a bioreactor that lives on hay, <laughs> and secondly is this capital expense. Now, every one of these blockbusters has had to have a facility built to produce the product. Now, and we and many of them are well over a billion dollars, and we estimate that a third of that cost is for those stainless steel tanks and the supporting structures. Now we've put less than 10 percent of that amount into a farm, and in that farm we have the capacity not for one but all of the top five of these、uh, of these drugs. Okay, so what about the rest of the world? You can imagine that there are places in the world where the capital is not available to invest in these big stainless steel tanks. So you could imagine that you could send goats, develop your own goats, send semen from animals that do produce the, the protein, and we actually know now that these are actually in play in Argentina, Brazil, China, Taiwan, and actually in these goats in New Zealand. So 
I just have one, actually, one more thought. And this is just kind of pushing it out a little further. Uh, what if you let the goat deliver the medicine? You know, goats are grown all over the world, and people use them as a source of milk and supplemental food. You can make goats that make anti-infective medicines, antiviral, antibacterial, and you could have that in their milk. So there are places where you, there's no refrigeration, uh, you can't drink the water, but you could send a goat, and a goat could live just fine. So you could have the village goat that has not only supplemental food, but actually could supply an anti-infective medicine at the same time. So um, what I've tried to show you is uh, 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 the incredible capacity of the mammary gland to secrete new proteins. Um, it has so much power, and we're just harnessing just a bit of that to produce these new proteins with the goal of making them less expensive. Uh, we've used some of the newest techniques to actually enhance, which is probably civilization's oldest method of making proteins, milking dairy animals. So the next time you have milk in your coffee, just think of all those possibilities. Thank you.